Good day. My name is Louise Forbes, and today I'm going to talk to you about dynamic system modeling in MATLAB. Let's first consider dynamic systems. Some algorithms have a dynamic component, for example, frame-based processing. This could be a simple waveform, a filter, or something much more advanced, like a MIMO channel or a tracking algorithm. Dynamic systems have algorithms that are state dependent. This means that depending on the time and the previous input, we have a different output. So the question you may be asking is how do I keep track of these states in MATLAB code? Let's consider a simple waveform problem written in MATLAB code. Here I have a frame-based sine wave that I'd like to process. I have an amplitude of 0.8, frequency of 100 Hz, sampling frequency of 1000 Hz, and my frame size is 796. If we consider what happens with each successive frame as in increments, we will notice that there are actually discontinuities and that each frame begins again from the value zero. This is not what we want, and this is obviously an incorrect result. So how do we make sure that our code remembers the state that we're in? Well, MATLAB has a solution, and it's called system objects. So let's look at the same waveform problem, but with a system object. Here is the code to create a system object with the same default properties as we had before. What you'll notice is that I've used the DSP sine wave system object. And in the for loop, I now call the step function. Let's see what happens with the system object if we look at these increments of n. You'll notice that we no longer have a phase discontinuity, and our output is correct. Let me give you an overview of system objects. They're based on an object-oriented programming approach, and they use internal stored states to store past behavior. This means that they're designed for implementing and simulating dynamic systems. They're also optimized for iterative computations that process large data streams, for example, in radar, audio, or video processing systems. Now, you've probably used system objects without even knowing it. If you've used any of these toolboxes, so DSP system toolbox, computer vision system toolbox, or phased array, just to name a few, you've probably used a system object, as these components are fundamental to the toolbox. Now, you may be saying to yourself, but I don't have any of these toolboxes. How can I use system object? Well, you can create your own. MATLAB has a defined API for developing system objects. The code to create them is divided into two parts, the same as an object-oriented approach. The first one is the properties that includes the discrete states that must be preserved. And the second are the methods. Three of the functions are compulsory, this being setup implementation, step implementation, and reset implementation. The code to call system objects is divided into three parts. The declaration, where parameters and states are initialized, and then the execution, where the outputs and states are computed. And this execution is typically done in a loop. And then finally, termination, where the resources are released, enabling objects to be set again. So how can you create a system object? Well, you can actually use one of the MATLAB templates, which can be found in the Home tab to create a system object. The first thing you'll need to do is define the properties, including the discrete states that must be preserved, and then the three functions that are compulsory, those being setup implementation, step implementation, and reset implementation. So let's go back to our simple waveform problem. How do we create our own system object that does the same thing as a DSP sine wave? Here I have the code that I wrote to create my own system object for our simple waveform problem. You'll notice the class definition. I've called it my sign, and it inherits from the MATLAB system class. I've also defined the properties, as well as the discrete states that are going to be preserved. In this case, I've called mine time step. Another common approach in object-oriented programming is to define a constructor. So here is my constructor. In this case, my constructor just determines which inputs do not require a name value pair input. The last thing I needed to do was to define those three compulsory functions, setup, step, and reset implementation. And you can see the code here. So how does my system object compare with the DSP system object? Well, the first thing we need to do is to declare our system objects with properties and states. The next thing that needs to happen is we need to execute these system objects to compute the outputs. This is usually done in a loop. And you can see in this for loop, I have called the dot step function for both the DSP system object and my system object. What I've also done is I've plotted graphs to show a comparison of the two. The one is a side by side subplot showing the DSP system object and my system object. So you can see that the two are similar. You'll see the DSP is on the left and my system object is on the right. 
And the second plot will show my system object with the DSP system object on top of each other. And you can see that the results are the same, showing that I've managed to produce a system object that produces the same outputs as the DSP system object. So where else could you use these system objects? We know that MATLAB is a programming-based approach and is incredibly useful for data analytics and GUI design. But what about the other product family of Simulink? We know that Simulink is a block-based environment, but it's also inherently time-based modeling. It also is a key component of the model-based design workflow. So did you know you could use your system object in Simulink? You could take your MATLAB code and by adding a few methods so that the Simulink solver can determine the output type, you can use the MATLAB system block and incorporate your MATLAB code in a Simulink model as part of a larger project. So let's wrap this up. System objects are used for simulating dynamic systems. This is because they have internal stored states that can preserve the integrity and produce the correct results. You can also create your own system object using the MATLAB templates. These can also then be used in Simulink for larger dynamic simulations. So now, why don't you try create your own system object? And remember, our support team is there if you get stuck. You can also get the code that I've demonstrated during this presentation and try it out for yourself. And also explore the help documentation for creating a system object. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.